For those of you that have been following along, we've been doing a big tire test shootout over the last few months. And for those that uh, aren't aware of, of what we're doing, I'll give you a quick rundown. Uh, I'm a shifter card enthusiast, uh, a karting enthusiast as well, all classes. Grew up racing in the 90s and just kind of a different deal. And so we're trying to, to bring back uh, that vibe and all the things that uh, we enjoyed back then and bringing in a tire that is more durable and uh, gets us a little more bang for our buck per se. So we endeavored on this journey to one, find a tire that suits our needs the best. And two, it uh, gave us an opportunity while we're testing everything to do this tire test shootout and expose maybe some lesser known brands, give all these brands a platform to compete against each other and show where some are uh, better than others and where some might need some improvements, et cetera. So it's been a great opportunity for us, one, to learn about all these tires and to learn about tires in general, and two, to um, explore this new adventure of trying to really bring grassroots racing uh, back in the way that I remember it. So anyway, without uh, going too much into the philosophy of it, we're, we're trying to put something together out here in the desert. And this is part of our testing, uh, our contract procurement to find a tire that we're going to use. And this test is broken up into three categories. There is going to be a, uh, a super budget tire, I guess you could say, for sub 15 horsepower stuff. So that's like the hard, hard tires or Briggs and Stratton, like uh, something equivalent to a 206 or a World Formula, 10 to 15 horsepower. That's not these tires that I have here. Uh, those are a harder tire. And this is what I'm calling the budget tire category. We are testing this on 30 horsepower shifters. There are restricted shifters or a junior shifter. And this would be a, a adequate comparison as well. If, you know, if these tires can hold up well to, to that, they'll hold up fine to, to Rotax, Senior Max, uh, X30, Shirley K100, and those junior classes. And then, of course, we're going to do another test that has the, the fast, soft, sticky tires. That's the MG Yellow, the LeConte White Prime, the Vega White Prime, and we're going to throw the Hoosier R55 in there as well. We might even throw uh, one of those uh, non-homologated tires in there like the MG SS, and uh, Vega makes a uh, FS, which is a soft, it's a yellow, uh, that's supposed to be... Uh, really soft and fast as well. So without further ado, let's dive into our results here. The Hoosier is kind of the, the first group of or brand of tires that we're going to talk about first. I have an R70 cut up in here just for example of showing uh, a sidewall really. One thing I learned in this test is how important sidewall is and how a tire performs for the specific use that we are we're using them for. And the R70, while it has uh, it seemed to be great rubber, very durable rubber. The the sidewall just it doesn't have any what we call a bead filler. It's the part in this area right here, and on other tires, you can see that there's this chunk of extra rubber in there. That's called the apex of the bead filler, and that's what gives the sidewall the extra reinforcement. That's why this is real floppy and flimsy, and why the ones that have more in that area are a little stiffer. It's up closer to the letters where they start to get soft. So uh, the R70 is the only tire in this group that actually didn't meet the performance minimums. We have a minimum lap time that uh, these tires have to meet in order for we, us to consider it adequate for this uh, junior uh, restricted shifter X30 for that type of racing. And the R70 didn't meet it. It could have with a better sidewall. I wanted just to throw that in there just for the sake of uh, comparison and a visual. The Hoosiers that did make it are the 60A and the 60B. The 60B definitely lasted quite a bit longer than the 60A. They both had the same problems while one uh, was much worse. The same problem was just exacerbated much worse in the 60A. The rubber on the inside shoulder, while this does have a stiffer sidewall than the R70, it's not stiff enough still for shifter or you know, higher horsepower stuff. And the, the sidewall collapses uh, and deforms so much that it feels like the wheel is bent or the axle is bent and the wheel is coming off. It picks up this vibration as you're loading it up mid to exit corner. It's extremely bad in the R70. There's a few other tires here I'm going to explain that do it as well. On these, it does it minor in a minor effect, maybe just one to two corners out of the track. But it definitely, one, slows you down in those corners, but two, uh, 
it creates a lot of wear on the inside shoulder and it creates so much heat on this tire that the inside shoulder actually splits apart. It looks like someone took a razor blade and cut little chunks, little slices out of the inside corner and it splits apart. So that is something unique only to this tire. It's the only tire that we've tested that it, that has actually done it to. Uh, that splitting has occurred. Other thing I want to note on this tire and another one we're going to talk about, once you get about four or five heat cycles in it, this tire falls off a cliff in lap time, it gets hard. If you were to punch the durometer on this new versus four or five heat cycles in, it would be a dramatic swing. This tire also oils more than any other tire. It has the oils come to the surface and has that rain going effect. So I'm not sure uh, what there can be done. I, I know a, a little bit about tire emulsions, but not enough to know, and I surely don't know the recipe and what they need to change on this, but something needs to change on uh, the 60A and 60B to prevent that from happening. We're going to move on. Uh, I will note also the, the Hoosier was the, had the least amount of wear life out of all these tires uh, to the tune of about half the usable life to the tires that perform better. So moving up in performance, we're going to the Mojos. We have the Mojo D2 and the Mojo D5. The, the D2 is very similar to the R70. It just doesn't have any sidewall. The D5 as well, same, same problem. The, the Mojo tires used to have mega sidewall, and they were known for being extremely hard to mount and having really stiff sidewalls. Uh, the last homologation cycle, they changed that, and they, they took all the bead filler, all the apex out of there. They're really easy to mount, so they got that going for them. The Mojo also lays a lot of rubber. Mojo and Vega are the two tires that lay rubber out of these tires. Mojo laying more, a little bit more than the Vega does. But for shifter, both of those tires uh, suffer the sidewall. It's the same thing as the Hoosier R70, although that tire was still able to keep it within the performance uh, minimums to, to even qualify for this. I think the D5 is uh, with, some, with a stiffer sidewall is definitely a, a, could be a potential heavy hitter in this category. It, it could be fast. Uh, the rubber feel is really good. You just really can't lean on it into exit without that sidewall issue. And I will notice, uh, we'll, we'll say that the, the Mojo, like I was saying, if you punch the rubber on the Hoosier new and five cycles in, and you did the same thing to this tire, this one would stay much more consistent, uh, more supple when the rubber stays soft or deeper into the tread. <clears throat> so the, the interesting thing about the Mojo is, one, yes, it's uh, the sanction, sanctioned tire for, uh, or the spec tire for Rotax sanctioned racing. And it lays rubber, a lot of rubber. So that's a unique thing. It's something that we haven't seen in the States for a long time and definitely adds a unique aspect to racing. Uh, you have to drive different, you have to set up the car different, and it's just a new, unique challenge. And, uh, and for that reason, it's, it's an interesting tire. Uh, now, for what we're using it for trying to find a budget tire that lasts a long time in a shifter, uh, it, because of the sidewall, it didn't meet that mark. If the, either the D2 or the D5, the rubber really felt about the same. Honestly, the D2 wasn't that far off. I think the D5 just couldn't... Uh, excel and, and show its potential because it you, the sidewall couldn't support the amount of uh load that we were asking of it so anyway I, the similar to the r70 if the r70 could put more sidewall in it and the d5 could more, put more sidewall in it put much more bead filler then those two have a lot of potential for for our use case moving up we're going to go to the cst and maxis brand of tires we have the really the only offering that cst makes and CST is the parent company of Maxxis. CST is made in China and the Maxxis are made in Taiwan. The CST being uh, the least expensive tire in this uh, whole group. And what's interesting about this tire is if we're gonna stay true to our, uh, and we are, to our, our formula of how we're going to, when everything is finished on this test, to rate them on the cost per usable lap, uh, this is going to be up there, being that it's, it's incredibly inexpensive compared to the others on the order to about half the price. Uh, it doesn't wear as well the best tires uh, as the best tires, but um, it's still a decent tire. It, it has adequate grip. I would imagine if you ran this tire on junior classes, uh, very few people or, or no one would com complain uh, on the wear. It, uh, it did wear about the same as the Mojo's. 
if we're, if we're uh, comparing what it's the closest to, a little bit better than the Hoosier. It has a very similar sidewall to like the 60B, 60A, and uh, to this Maxxis Sport, this T4 that we're going to talk about. But the reason why sidewall issues didn't come up on this one is the, the tread just doesn't have the, the grip in it to load the tire and flex the tire like a tire that's a little softer. So we didn't run into sidewall issues on that tire. Another reason why is this tire, uniquely to all other tires, it says it's a 7.1, but the tread is a little bit narrower. When you mount it, you don't, uh, it takes getting the tire just right for the bead to set, but if you don't have it just right, you would, might need to use uh, a tire band to mount that because it is, the tread is a little bit uh, smaller. And perhaps that's why it's a little bit slower than the best tires. I can say that the rubber is, like I said earlier, it's not quite as soft as some of the ones that uh, perform better. It's still within performance minimums. But anyway, uh, that tread stretching the sidewall and that it just doesn't have the, uh, the grip that the others do makes the sidewall on this seem adequate. Fine. And now I want to talk about this uh, Zero Counter. It's a Maxxis tire. It's the same tire as the RC1K, which has got a purple label on. This one's a white label. And this is actually modeled after a prime tire. It has the best sidewall of all the tires here. And I didn't realize this earlier, that, that this tire was not like an option tire or something similar. Uh, it's a prime tire with prime tire sidewall uh, apex here, but a little bit more durable tread than what Maxxis others prime tires are made out of. So it's, it's really designed exactly for what we're... Um, what we're using it for. The, the cost on the Maxxis is a little bit more than the CST. It's, it's definitely more attractive than uh, all the, the big name brand stuff here. The problem that I ran into on Maxxis, now I didn't run into it on the CST for whatever reason, but both this Maxxis RC1K, the zero counter, and this Maxxis T4, which is the same as the Maxxis Sport, these tires, once you built uh, four or five heat cycles in them, similar to how the Hoosier does, they really fall off a cliff. Now they don't oil like the Hoosier does. They don't wear in those four or five heat cycles. Like in four or five heat cycles on the Hoosier, especially the 60A, the 60A was the worst wearing tire of all these, the 60B. I got maybe 20, 25 more laps out of that than the 60A. Um, but but the, the Max was both the RC1K and the, the Sport. Uh, once I got to those four or five heat cycles, it still didn't have a whole lot of wear on it. It's just, there's something going on with this particular rubber they don't quite have the technology and their emulsions uh, figured out. There's uh, maybe some different oils they ought to use. Um, I'm not going to get too in depth with uh, on those things, but perhaps it's uh, the way they're cooking it, the temperature, how long in the uh, in the mold oven. But there's something. This has been a problem with Maxis for a while. I remember uh, 15 or so years ago. It seemed like uh, I was I was hearing that about this tire that it. Uh, Gets a few heat cycles in it, and then it falls off a cliff. Um, the, the sidewall on the Sport is similar to this uh, CST. I would say it's a little bit uh, softer feeling. I haven't cut up the Sport yet. That's why I have a tire here. We did have a little bit of deflection issues on the Sport. Uh, this is meant to be a, a really long-lasting tire, and, of course, uh, it has, has shown that. But just like the RC1K where it got to four or five heat cycles and really fell off, this one actually fell off so far that it fell outside of our minimum lap time requirements. So that's why it's still mounted. We're going to be using this tire for some other testing for the lower horsepower stuff. That's why I haven't cut it up yet. It's still got plenty of rubber on it. And in fact, this tire went those four or five heat cycles uh, and went faster the second one, faster the third one, leveled off the fourth one. And then wrapped them up, put them in the trailer, went out to test the next day, and then that's when they had just eight tenths they had gained. So, um, like I said, I'm not sure why. It's it's common to uh, both this Maxxis tire and the RC1K that we, uh, this one here that we tested. So, uh, if that problem can be fixed on uh, on all of Maxxis tires, then I think they'd have an excellent offering. But as is that. Uh, that something needs to change in, uh, I'm guessing in the tread compound uh, to resolve that. So anyway, it could be a fantastic tire that the Sport could be a fantastic tire. It, gosh, it's 
of all these tires, if that one hadn't fallen out of its win out of our window, that one would last the longest by a good bit too. Like we, not only did we do the four heat cycles, wrapped them up, put them in the trailer. Next day went out, we did four more heat cycles, wrapped them up, went out another time, did another four heat cycles. They were like at 120 laps, and there's just there's no wear on it at all. Um, so anyway. Maxxis with that tire, maybe a tire that's a little bit softer, this RC1K as well. The RC1K was fast. It was right there with the fastest tire. Like I said, it just fell off. It wasn't consistent for a long time. So for our use, we're looking for something that stays consistent for something that you could race two or three races. Just wasn't doable with that. So going up, move on to the next one. The LeConte series of tires. This is Levanto, the LeConte option, and the LeConte... Uh, Australian version, the LH03. All three of these tires felt uh, almost identical. The, the LH03 might have been a tad bit faster than the other two. It seems to, on the track, it felt like it had a little better sidewall. The uh, LeConte Red Option and the Levanto were having some deflection issues. Not major. It was like every uh, one time a lap on the one real loaded up corner. And uh, the LeConte Australian might have, and I might be splitting hairs on this, might have felt a little bit better there. I mean, it was still having some deflection issues. But for sure, on all three of these tires, they have mega rubber on them, the thickness. And when you wear down the inside shoulder, which is a symptom, it wears fast on the inside shoulder, which is a symptom of the, the soft sidewall. This tire uh, needs more sidewall reinforcement for the, the load that we're putting on it in our testing. And this restricted shifter, uh, like I said earlier, it wears the shoulder a lot. And the inside dimple, once you get to about 90 or so laps, uh, the inside dimple is gone so much that the tire really starts to fall off. And it's got a lot of rubber on the outside shoulder still. Uh, we didn't flip any tires. We Just to stay true to uh, make, making sure everything was consistent, nothing was flipped. Everything was run the same, time, same way the entire time through the test. And if this tire, all of these tires had more sidewall reinforcement, the wear across the tire would be much more uh, consistent instead of having a heavy wear on the inside shoulder and still leaving a ton of rubber on the outside dimple. Uh, if that could be addressed, this would be uh, an excellent tire for our use as well. Uh, the other thing I want to mention about this tire is that it uses some type of different way that the two inner fabrics are wrapped on the drum when the uh, green tire is made. The way a tire is made, there's this big drum, and they have a fabric go over one, on, uh, one layer of fabric go over and another, and the way it overlaps, it just comes at an angle. And for this particular tire, they do something that has that lay a little bit flatter. The reason why there's directional arrows on cart tires is because in one direction is the way it's supposed to roll, and the other direction, this little lip, as you wear down to the, to the you know, wearing a tire completely out, that fabric starts to get peeled up if, it's, if the tire is going the wrong direction, anti to the uh, directional arrows. These are supposed to have some, some way of where that's a, a tighter, uh, there's not an issue, to where that doesn't start showing through. It comes across the tire, and I know you've all seen where that diagonal line of the cord showing through, uh, that's the overlay of those two fabrics. And there's something different on these where you can run them deeper, uh, into the tire before that uh, starts to show through. And I'm not sure if and this is, you know, I don't know if they're related, but I found on these tires that not often, but somewhat often, I was having imbalance issues, tire, imbalance tires on the front end, where over 70 miles an hour, one of the fronts was starting to pick up a vibration. I'm not sure if that's related to the way that they're doing their, car, their inner fabrics for their carcass, or if that's something unrelated, but I just felt like I needed to mention that on these tires. These tires are fast initially. Uh, for qualifying, and they're pretty consistent, like I said, up to that 90, maybe you can push it to 100 laps before uh, that inner shoulder, just from a soft side wall, really wears off and the tire, the tire falls off. So uh, to conclude, that one, a similar story to some of the others, if it had more sidewall for what we're using, would be a fantastic tire. Now we're going to move up to the Vega. Like I said earlier, the Vega lays a little bit of rubber. It was the most consistent tire from qualifying till it was almost worn out uh, than any other tire. In fact, qualifying second, third, fourth, I would say all the way to probably the sixth or seventh heat cycle, this tire was extremely consistent. 
uh, within a two to three tenths, two and a half maybe tenths window. This rubber seems to be similar to the Mojo, but the Mojo had the sidewall problem, uh, a heavy, a big sidewall problem. This one is really consistent into the depth of the rubber. This tire, similar to the Levanto, the Mojo, the Hoosier R70, has sidewall issues as well. And I believe the reason why that's kind of a common issue, not with all of them, is because this tire is maybe more designed for uh, lower weight tag stuff in Europe. I know they run a lower weight over there. Uh, junior classes, uh, not shifter. I know we're running restricted shifter, so that's slightly different. Our track is a high grip track, so that it makes it a little worse. But uh, you know, we're out in Phoenix, Arizona. It's hot, which we all ha usually always have good grip. So um, the Vega did have a sidewall issue as well. It could be. Uh, a better performer in lap time than all of these tires, although it was right there on par with the MG option, uh, if it had a little more sidewall. So let's let's talk about these three. We have three tires here. We have the Vega FM, the Vega option, the XH4 option, here's the FM, and this, uh, the blue, the uh, Nord, Nordum. And the option tire did something unique in where the fronts wore faster or about the same as the rear does and that's never happened in a shifter i never experienced that in a shifter cart so that was interesting unique also on the xh4 there was a, um, a the cord like i was just des describing uh on like the levanto where uh how a cord comes through a tire on a diagonal it came through on the XH4 really premature into the depth of the tread on the XH4, the green. It, the only thing I could think of why that happens is when they're pushing it in the mold, maybe there's something in the, in the, uh, the inner press or I'm not sure what, but uh, that pushes that, that, uh, that overlap deeper into the tread. And it wasn't true with the other Vegas that we tested, but it was true with the XH4 through, came through really early. And I say really early, it was 30 laps uh, earlier, maybe 40 laps earlier than it should have. It was on track to be just like the uh, the Nordum. The FM was a little bit slower than the Nordum, the, the Nordum being the blue one, which is odd. I don't quite understand that. It's supposed to be faster, and the FM didn't quite last as long. The Nordum uh, matched the MG option in the amount of usable laps that it did, and also pretty much right there on lap time. I'm showing you the sidewalls here. They're all really much, the, uh, pretty much the same. They are the same. The only tire that Vega makes that has more sidewall reinforcement is their, their prime tire, the uh, XM4, they're white. So, uh, but it's got a really soft compound. So for our use, the, this Vega, it was almost drivable where I didn't have to kind of drive around the sidewall issue. Uh, but that tire could be faster than the MG option if it had a, a stiffer apex like the Prime did and probably last longer than the, the uh, MG option tire as well. So, um, and it's like a similar story. This tire could be the best tire that I've tested if it had more sidewall. Um, similar story to the Levanto. Uh, I talked about that on the D5. I said that about the Hoosier R70. Let's dive into the MG. The MG is a very unique tire. Uh, in the rubber that it uses. This has some type of, I'm not sure, but it uses some type of rubber that is not uh, a traditional rubber. It, the way it heat cycles is very unusual. It's rock hard when it's at room temp or cold. So we found that cold tracks, like in Las Vegas, temporary tracks, anywhere up north where it's cooler, carts that just don't put heat in the tires, carts that have 10, 15 horsepower or so, juniors, cadets, it's hard to get heat into this tire. Uh, and so it feels mega slick. It just doesn't fire off. In shifter, at our track, we don't have that problem. And uh, because of those properties, this tire seems to, uh, it lasts a long time. It, this and the, and the Vega have been top performers. Uh, so far, we have a few that I'm gonna talk about in a second, but uh, this tire, and I didn't finish my thought earlier, the rubber, uh, I believe it's not coming from a traditional uh, rubber tree. It's some type of 
hybrid tree that they're using in, in this rubber compound. Uh, I, can only, I, only have, uh, I can only guess and make assumptions on what it is, but because uh, MG is quite closed lipped on uh, their factory and, and their production methods, but uh, the rubber that they're using, because of its drastic uh, durometer changes with heat, this tire, when you punch it cold, punches like a rental tire. It's so hard. Uh, but once it comes up to temperature, it's, it's good. It's sticky, uh, good grip rubber. And because of this drastic change, the pores close up. And I think that's one reason why this tire seems to, uh, similar to the Vega does it as well, but it's not from the same uh, thing I'm describing. Uh, it seals the tire in. It doesn't let the oils in escape. The oils and the natural things in the rubber escape uh, or come to the surface like uh, some of the other tires do. So you can take this tire and you don't even wrap it up. Just throw it in your trailer and come back a week, two weeks later, go run. And we found that this tire uh, was consistent and be right there. Uh, where some of the others, even wrapping it up, taking care of it, making sure it's stored uh, somewhere where it's not hot, and it would still fall off uh, a few weeks later if you went to go run it again. So I believe that has everything to do with this, this type of rubber that they're using in this tire that it has this drastic temperature changes. It, uh, it has this sheen, and you can kind of tell on here, this tire has a, a sheen to it where uh, I'm guessing that's kind of an effect of that, the rubber porosity closing. It does that to the track too. On uh, tracks where they were running this tire for the whole weekend, the track picks up a sheen to it. Ah, it's the only tire that does it. Uh, but anyway, it, uh, it has the best sidewall for all of the option tires. It, it's the only sidewall here that really pushed you off a corner well that had adequate grip. You know, like the D5, uh, or excuse me, the, the CST had a decent sidewall. This, uh, the, the zero counter had a decent sidewall, but it didn't have enough grip or the, the same grip as this tire did. So amongst the option tires, this, this sidewall was the best for what we're using. And I think that's part of the reason why one, it wore so consistently across the, the width of the tread, especially on the inside shoulder. And like I said earlier, the way that this rubber cycles, how it heat cycles and closes all the pores up and it kind of maintains the shininess uh, is what keeps the, the oils and things in it better uh, than others. One thing I will note on these tires too, I have the, it's brother, this is the soft, the SKM, the MG Yellow. Uh, it has the same sidewall reinforcement, which is very similar apex construction to all the other options, but uh, the rubber that they're using here is much stiffer, not only here in the shoulder, and it's also thicker in the shoulder uh, than the other option tires. But what's interesting is they didn't beef it up any for the, uh, the soft tire, the MG Yellow. It's the same exact construction. So while the option tire is fantastic for exactly what we're doing, 30 horsepower, shifter, tag, uh, Senior Max, X30, when we put this uh, Evenco red tire on, it does the same thing that like the Levanto does. We're producing a lot more gripping. And yes, it is faster. It's the fastest tire of all these initially. And it's not really supposed to be in this group. Uh, that's a tire that's supposed to be in the prime category. The inside shoulder where it's fast. And uh, because of that, this, this tire on the 30 horsepower restrictor that we're testing a restricted shifter that we're testing all these in, this tire only lasted about the same as what the Mojo's did. It did quite poorly. And um, I believe one is because the rubber's so soft and two, because the inner shoulder uh, just can't hold up with the same sidewall reinforcement that they put in the option tire. So that, that concludes everything that we've tested so far. Now I have four other tires on the way that um, one of them being the updated one of these, this is the previous amalgamation tire. So this is not really going to be relevant, uh, this information for this tire. The new one will be. And then I have three others that uh, two of them, I'll tell you, one of them is a Mojo D1. 
It's supposed to be much less expensive. It's going to have some improvements. We'll see about that. The other two are uh, from Asian markets. I'm not going to say exactly who they come from, but I've already tested them once. They were really close to meeting performance minimums. The rubber lasted uh, exceptionally well. And similar to all these, it didn't have enough sidewall reinforcement. What was nice about these two companies is uh, they're smaller companies and I was able to work with them and have them, uh, and they were willing to, that was the main thing. They were willing to make a, a revision for this test and for me to put more Apex in the sidewall and send me a revised set of tires, both of them. So uh, with those, they ought to be right here in performance. Uh, they, they'll be close, they'll be within the window we set Based off what I've seen and tested so far, they'll last a long time too. The rubber is really durable. They remind me of like a Hoosier R7. Like the rubber uh, was really great. The grip seemed adequate, uh, but when you just went to lean on those tires, they just wouldn't lean back. The sidewall deflected, felt like a bent wheel or a loose wheel, bent axle. So I'm really excited about those. Uh, stay tuned for that when those come in. Okay, a few more things I wanted to add. The All the results will be released. I'm going to put a graph and a table that's got all the lap times and it shows everything uh, for the entire duration of its usage. And then also it's going to uh, have the calculation next to it of what the uh, cost per usable lap. So look forward to that. We are going to do the full cinematic video and you know hype it up for this tire shootout deal. That is coming. Uh, we have to get through those last few ones that I was talking about. There's a few other things I want to mention and I kind of want to summarize. There's a few tires here that with just a, a small tweak, they could be excellent for our use. R70 has good tire uh, tread durability, adequate grip, needs more sidewall. So R70 with a better sidewall would be fantastic. The Maxxis T4 and the uh, Maxxis Sport. Uh, whatever it is that we can do to figure out how to make it uh, not uh, dry out and get hard after four or five heat cycles, that tire would be fantastic for our use. The Levanto, LeConte option, and LeConte Australian, so all of the Levanto brands of uh, option tires, just stiffen the sidewall uh, enough to you know, put the same sidewall reinforcement in that one as it does in the Prime, and that would be perfect for what we're, we're wanting. On the Vega tires, take this Vega Nordum, same thing as Levanto, put a little more sidewall in it, perfect for what, we're, uh, what we need. So, uh, and the only other thing is this Evenco, the reason why it uh, might be undesirable for some tracks that are colder and uh, or use cadet carts, you know, have a lot of junior ones and junior twos that just don't like this tire. You know, I think the reason why it performs well is because of those very same reasons. So I'm not sure, you know, uh, taking that out of this is going to make it worse. So we're going to find that out on the new one. If you are at a track that that this tire is a problem at. Like you just can't get these to fire off. The Vega fires off really fast and the Mojo fires off really fast. So um, you might be interested in either of those. So uh, yep, I just wanted to add that. And uh, again, we'll see you at the track.